Hello, everyone. Hola a todos. Daja uh, hao. Everyone, I am really excited to talk to you today about artificial intelligence. AI Plus is the name of the talk because this is a talk about what artificial intelligence is and how it can be added. AI Mas business, AI Mas your scenario, AI Plus. And it is going to change everything. And let me jump into it. Um, so, the talk today is going to be just about first some background, some context for AI. And then we're going to talk about some concrete scenarios so you get a sense of how realistic applications make sense for AI and how it can affect society. And I will also talk about Peru specifically. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what makes this real. What's the underlying technology that makes this actually work? Then we're going to go on to practical ways that businesses can actually use this technology. And then finally, the future. What's coming next? So, a little bit of an introduction about myself and why I can speak about this uh, topic is that I am from, uh, originally I'm from the United States, but I founded a company in China, uh, co-founded this company in 2014. Uh, we focus on computer vision and deep learning, and we are from Microsoft Research, I'm from Microsoft Research, uh, Google, the University of Oxford, VGG, we're a bunch of computer vision experts who came together to produce one of the top AI companies now in China. And we are ready now to take this technology that we've been developing for several years out into the world and see what good we can do. So our company has won many of these sort of standard benchmarks, Olympic games of, of computer vision, including the recent Google CVPR Web Vision uh, competition last month, uh, where we used AI to beat the current state of the art. Besides the technology, our company has reached the international level for China, where we have been representing China on the international stage, for example, at the G20 uh, Young Entrepreneurs Conference, as you can see from these images. So, the core topic I want to speak to you guys about today is a message I want to send. AI is here right now. It is practical and it is ready and it is production value can be seen, felt, and enjoyed. Now, you may have heard, of course, AI from movies and, and popular media, and may have heard it, you know, from a science fiction point of view. But AI is actually practical now. It is realistic. It's not general intelligence. It is narrow and task-based, but it works. And in particular, the area of AI that I work on and that I believe is most viable is computer vision, to make the machine see just like people can, and then use that to improve businesses. So AI by itself, not that useful. It's just a technology. Where it becomes interesting and useful is AI mass, AI plus. AI plus something, something useful to make impact. And I was so you know, so happy to come to Peru and see so many applications that are possible where we can improve things, we can make things more efficient, we can improve the quality, make things safer. AI plus is what it's all about. So, how did we get here? This is actually a total technology revolution. It's happening right now. This is a new stage for human civilization to reach this point, to reach this new point of productivity. And it's 
following a pattern of exponential improvements in human capability that has gone back for thousands of years. It's an exponential improvement in productivity and technology. There's been economic revolutions before, technology revolutions before. So-called fourth industrial also look like this, where we have thousands of years ago, we have this agricultural revolution. Then hundreds of years ago, we have the industrial revolution. Then tens or decades of ago, we have this information revolution. And this all brings us to now, to today, the intelligence, artificial intelligence revolution. Each phase leads to the next, where the information age gave us the raw components to make AI work, which are essentially unlimited computing power and unlimited data. Those are the ingredients plus algorithms that we've improved to make intelligence work. And what's really cool is that this cycle going from the top left to the top right, to the bottom right, to the, to the bottom left, continues back. Because now AI is going to be helping agriculture. AI is going to be helping industry. And AI is going to be helping the information economy to get better by being more efficient, safer, and higher quality. So, let's dive into some concrete scenarios where AI makes sense to improve our lives and improve business. The first case, which you guys have probably seen, you've heard about Tesla and their auto drive, but I want to be a little bit more concrete in how this could affect, for example, Peru. AI in autonomous vehicles, where the car drives you. So, of course, in the interior of a city, this is not so practical now. It's too dynamic. But where a car can drive, of course, there's a lot of problems that could be solved. One of them is human life uh, issues. Obviously, death by, by the traffic accidents is one of the biggest in the world. 1.25 million people ye a year die on the road. Why? If the car can be driven by itself, even dr it drives better than people, it doesn't get tired, it doesn't get distracted, it doesn't drink. The car can bring people safely and save lives. But let's talk practically, for example, in Peru. On the constrained environments, for example, the industrial environments, in the mines, or in, in places where we can control the space, having a truck, for example, that could be autonomously driven to, not necessarily a truck, but something to move things from point A to point B. This can be much safer and much more efficient and get things done. Let's talk about healthcare. This is a wonderful scenario that we at our company at Malone, we work on this particular scenario quite a bit. In healthcare, there are so many problems. I think that if you think about where the applications are, saving lives is one of the most important applications for AI. Think about in healthcare, there's so many scenarios, but one of them in particular, in one area of healthcare is radiology, where you just need to look at an image, an x-ray or a CAT scan, and make a decision to potentially save your life. For example, one of the biggest causes of death is lung cancer. Lung cancer is a really interesting disease because it's one of the few diseases which is not just a treatable disease, but curable if you catch it early enough. If you catch it in the first year or second year, you can just cut out the nodule and you can actually be cured of lung cancer. So what is the limiting factor for lung cancer is not the machines anymore. The machine price, CAT scan price is going down. It's the human experts. There's just not enough of them to go around. So with AI, we can actually make this more efficient by helping the doctor, not replacing the doctor, helping them become more efficient by examining the CAT scan and saying, hey doctor, you may want to take a look over here. This could be a potential issue. And then the doctor can look at it and recommend a course of action to potentially save your life. So that's one example. AI 
plus food, plus agriculture. This is obviously a very important scenario that we have been looking at, in particular in, in Peru and other places where this is not just about efficiency, this is about quality. Because how it works today, at the end of a pipeline, for example, in, in an agricultural uh, scenario, you have people to randomly select products you know, randomly select foods to check the quality. And you'll say, you know what, this one's not good, we're going to throw that away. But again, we're not talking about replacing people, but making them more efficient. So what if the machine can actually help by checking, not random sampling, but just checking every single one? And then the ones that the machine thinks maybe are suspect, have a person, have the same person, review those instead of randomly selecting possibly the good ones. This is about efficiency. And this is about quality. So security is so important. How can AI help the security situation? Well, face recognition is obviously a great scenario for improving security because nowadays, you may have seen face recognition in biometrics and things like that, but I, I'm happy to tell you guys that AI has reached a new level for face recognition. On the public benchmarks that test how well the algorithm is doing, the face recognition technology has now reached an outperformance level when compared to people. So the machine is at a superhuman level for recognizing faces. It can recognize a face better than you can. What does this mean? It means that for business scenarios, for security checks, or for surveillance, the machine can help identify potential suspects or people that you want to you know, check for access to your business or to find out who they were if they you know, were in a situation that needed an investigation. This is a very powerful technology that can be useful for security. In retail, artificial intelligence, you guys may have seen this thing called Amazon Go, where you can just go into a store and you don't have to wait on the line at the checkout. You can just grab and go. How does that work? The computer could have cameras around the store and to watch as you're picking up products. You pick up a product, the computer sees what product you have picked up. And guess what? You don't need a barcode anymore. The computer can track which product you've taken and put into the cart and walked out the store with and then use the face recognition to charge your account. That's a scenario that's being worked on in Amazon, also in China. But there are many more things we can do with retail for example, improving the efficiency of e-commerce, where you can take a picture of a product and go and get it online in a store. Security, again, I want to emphasize, security is so good in terms of application areas for AI. Take an example of baggage scanning. When you guys go to the airport, you go down to where you need your bag to be scanned, there's usually a person who's looking at that bag x-ray result and making a decision. Maybe they're tired, maybe they're playing with their phone, maybe they're just not interested, or maybe they just didn't notice the weapon or the prohibited item like a water bottle. So one of the projects we work on is to be able to identify prohibited products from x-rays, just like this. This is actually uh, water bottles. The computer can help out, and again, not replacing jobs, but augmenting people to be more efficient. Because what if the machine is always watching for all the products, and when it finds something, it just says, hey, person who's here, please observe, this is a potential issue, have a look. So this is another very good security scenario for AI. Fiber, fabrics, textiles, this is a great, important scenario in Peru. Actually, that's me earlier today in one of your uh, factories for producing textiles. And I was, really, I, I was really interested to come on site and see the process of how Peruvian businesses work with textiles. And there are so many scenarios where AI can make a difference. AI can improve the efficiency, improve the quality. You can put cameras at different points in the system, when there's a failure, you can detect the failure and then make a decision to quickly 
avoid stoppage or low quality goods, which can save millions and millions of dollars and make the business run more efficient, make the consumers get higher quality goods. Everyone is winning along the way. One of the other areas we do with fiber is to analyze the fibers in fabric samples, to count them, to look at what type they are. You know, this is a job that is really perfect for the computer because it doesn't have to random sample. It could, instead of randomly sampling sparse amounts, it can just exhaustively count every single fiber in all of the samples it does so the quality can improve. This is a big win. Textiles. Imagine in textiles, which is an area we also work on, what if you wanted to buy one of those fabrics? You're a designer. How are you going to even search for this? How do you even describe the complex patterns on textiles? So it turns out that one of the great scenarios is to take a photo of a pattern you like. For example, these flowers. I like these flowers, and I want to find the pattern to match these flowers. This is a great scenario that AI can help do to bring the designer to the textile so they can buy it. Let me show you something we built, one of our customers building on top of our uh, technology. This is Yolabao. In China, this is the number one e-commerce player for textiles. And they are building this solution on Product AI, which is our platform. You can upload an image of a textile, any type of textile you want, and you can find it. As you scroll down, you can find the likeness or the semantically similar products. In the real world, you may find a fabric or a texture you like. Just go ahead, take a picture. The system will automatically recognize it in the store. Find it, click, buy, have a nice day. Now this is an easy system to set up using our system, and it works. Really, really popular in China. Eight out of the top 10 textile makers build on this system. Fashion. Everyone in this room, everyone looks really good. Everyone understands that fashion is really important for people's uh, livelihoods. You want to look good. But a lot of the fashion knowledge is trapped in these so-called experts who know how to arrange the clothes. But what if AI can help you? What if AI can look at so many photos and actually customize to say, hey, given this top, this bottom is actually a really good combination on you. Of course, being able to look at an item someone has and say, hey, where'd you get that? That looks nice, I wanna buy that. Take a photo, look it up on the store, and get it. Or even one that's very similar. Let me show you something we built to make sure this is a clear idea for you. So, this is a fashion deep learning technology we've developed. You can take a photo of, say, plants, get some inspiration. I love this floral pattern. Let me go ahead and see what fashion I can get from that. Here is uh, someone wearing a particular dress. Or I can go to the magazine, look at the stars. I can move this box around, and it will recognize automatically what type of object it is, what gender it's on, and then I can just go ahead and buy it. This is AI. This is also a scenario of, of fashion uh, recommendation. I found this particular goods, and then I can see a collection and see this good is, looks good with this particular bag or this particular top. This is all helped by AI in fashion. Let me show you what it looks like AI from the supply side. So we work with the Chinese uh, Textile Information Center to help the, the fabric makers predict the color dyes that are necessary for the next season. So we analyze the runway photos to quantitatively collect and analyze the colors that will be popular. So instead of subjectively saying, oh, yellow is going to be really hot, this particular hot yellow is going to be good for this summertime, we can actually quantitatively analyze all the runway photos to crunch the numbers on the colors and then produce analytics that can actually quite accurately predict the color uses in the next few seasons. And this is actually one of the uh, reports that are generated by the AI that goes to all the textile makers in China. And again, in a collaboration with the Chinese government, uh, we produce these reports. So, just a little bit brief, just because it sounds a little bit magical, right? How can AI do all this stuff? I want to just very briefly talk about what's underneath all of this to make it concrete. This technology revolution is based on this concept called deep learning. You may have heard about it, 
Um, this is why you may have heard about it. The red line is the Google trend of this term deep learning. And only in about 2016 and 15, it started to explode. Deep learning, everyone's talking about it, at least the technology community. Deep learning is changing the game. Now, before deep learning was pattern recognition was the major way, and you can see it's been decreasing over time. What's the difference? Pattern recognition is about handcrafted rules. As programmers, we will make rules like if, else, to determine you know, what we're gonna try to recognize. We're gonna write hard code those rules. With deep learning, it's about data-driven systems where you provide many examples and you design a neural network to recognize those examples and learn from them to learn the underlying representation so that you can get this accurate result. Just very briefly, I want to give you a concept of what is this, this thing called neural networks. It's not new, but what is new is deep learning where you have a stacking of neurons and at every layer in these neural networks you get a different level of semantics, this hierarchy of semantics where you start with the lowest level, for example, pixels and edges and then going on to, say, objects and then things and then maybe scenes. This ordering, this stacking of neurons and the learning process is the power behind this technology. You don't write the code. You create a machine to write its own code. It's this level of indirection that's powerful. And so at our company, at Malong, what we spend most of our time doing is designing these networks and then figuring out how to train them effectively to get the results that you see. So the basic technology can achieve things like this. Give it an image, it will say, what is this image of? This is a dog, Pero. This is a particular type of dog. This is the location of the dog in the image, which is localization, or the number of objects, or a segmentation. These are the fundamental techniques that when you use them in a creative way, you can answer very powerful scenarios like I showed you before. Why am I here to talk to you today is this exciting point that AI is now practical. How can I say it's practical? I'm not saying about hype. I don't want to make it sound so amazing. I want to just talk about the numbers on the public benchmarks, the scientific benchmarks where AI is tested on, for example, ImageNet, which is the most famous Olympic of computer vision. This standard, which is about a test of 1,000 objects to give to a computer, and the computer will classify those 1,000 objects, for example, dog or airplane or cat or flowers. The computer is now, if you give it to a human, a human being scores about 95% on this exam, a computer now reaches 97%. This is an indicator of how well computing has gone with computer vision. So, how does this work? In 2010 and 2011, this wasn't that spectacular. We had, you know, quite far from the human level performance. This was the traditional techniques. But then, in 2012, there's this explosive progress based on the deep learning approach. Rapidly, we got to this human level performance, and now we've exceeded it. We've exceeded it so far that this competition was retired this year. This year, it's done, and a new competition came called Web Vision, which is much harder than this. And I'm proud to share with you guys that we actually, my company, uh, won the competition this year. So, um, so this is the, the current state of the art for computer vision. But just because you do AI doesn't mean it's all the same. You know, you may hear, okay, they do AI or they do AI, it doesn't mean that they're all the same performance. They're still the architecture, they're still the techniques that you can have different levels of quality. So the orange line at the top is our performance on a particular benchmark, which is uh, clothing search. And the best reported result is the uh, red line. It's about a 25 to 30% gap depending on at what recall you're looking at. Um, so the gap could be quite different depending on your technique. So what we did is we wrapped all these technologies together into something we call Product AI. Product AI is a platform that makes it easy for businesses to leverage this technology. Businesses don't need to know about neural networks or data science. They just need to use an interface, 
a easy to use interface that any developer can access. And that's what we made, and that's what our contribution is. You can use it to recognize products in a way that people can, and you can use it to recognize all kinds of things that can help your business grow and be more efficient. And we released product AI in 2016 in China, and it's really popular in China for this, the businesses and the industries we work on, like textiles, furniture, fashion, and others. And now in 2017, we can see that we've just released it to the world, and that's why I'm here coming from China to share this all with you. And you can use this platform to just log on and upload images and get this search and tagging. So this is an example of a customer who built on product AI. And so what they do is, this is an industrial design or a furniture company. You can take an image and then you can find the similar images. But there's something really cool I want to show you is that now the customer is flexible. You can select any part of the image you want. There's no rules. Just select a box and find those particular objects from that box. Here's a window. Get that window. Now, this is just one type of interface. You can imagine many types. This is just to illustrate the technology in production and to illustrate that this is right now and right here. And you can even upload, for example, blueprints and find similar blueprints to what you're searching. The image recognition technology is really powerful. OK, so what's coming next? What's the future is technology is going to get out of your way. Right now, you're playing with your phone, you're pushing the buttons, you're, you're using, you're clicking, you're typing. The future is natural. Technology that is transparent. So let me show you what that may look like in a what you see is what you get kind of way. So this is a prototype that we worked with Microsoft on for the HoloLens. The HoloLens is a heads-up display glasses that makes augmented reality work, but we, we added AI to this scenario. So in this case, we want to just show you the power using the same API that you saw before. You can look at a person or a thing, and you can get a computer vision recognition to, for example, buy someone's clothes that they're wearing just by looking. You don't have to say or do anything. You just look and you can get. And then in the air, you can tap it if you'd like. But you can now imagine this, for example, in industrial applications too. For example, I'm in the, in the farm and I'm deciding, should I pick this fruit? And I can look at this tree, it recognizes this tree, it says, you know what, this tree was in a bad sector last year, or it may need a, a little bit more time for the harvest. Or you're in an, an, another industrial scenario where having a heads-up display will help you be more productive in your work. So, I want to leave you guys with three points to remember from this talk. Three points. The first point is that AI is here and it's going to change all of your lives. It's going to change business and it's going to come very, very soon to everyone's uh, reality. And it's, it's coming in strong. Now, the second major point is that AI is not just for the giants. It's not just for the Amazons or the technology giants. You may say, hey, I'm not a technology company, I'm just a, I'm just a normal business. How am I going to be able to use AI? Well, the good news is that AI is going to be available to businesses just like any other technology or, or, or uh, benefit that you may use to build on to improve your efficiency. It's going to be unlocked from the giants to the rest of the world. And how that's going to happen is providers like us, Malong, we will be able to enable other companies to build on and reach success, reach efficiency, quality, security through these technologies. Because we're going to open it up to the world so that everyone can benefit from AI. And so, with that, I'd like to say gracias, thank you all very much.